Straight ahead on CCX News, creating a safer city. How Brooklyn Park is part of a national effort to reduce violence among young men. Plus the new go-to spot for playtime. We'll check out the latest playground addition to the Three Rivers Park system. And later off the clock with the mayor of Plymouth. How she spends much of her free time. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. The Brooklyn Park Mayor and City Youth Leaders are taking a closer look at how they can engage African American youth. They are part of a national movement to reduce violence among young men and boys. Part of that work includes engagement efforts and building trust between police and youth. Efforts like a cops and teens basketball game in Brooklyn Park is one example, but there's new work underway locally too through the city's United Movement. We take, you know, 20, 30 young people over eight to 10 weeks, and we basically expose them to um, different activities that help build their confidence and help them identify their strengths. That is part of the city's United Cohort project that's underway in Brooklyn Park. City youth leaders are in Knoxville, Tennessee this week for the National Cities Unite Conference aimed at creating change. It's about providing opportunities for employment, education, and skills building, and it takes partnerships between the city, community, and businesses. A lot of times, folks, young people say that they want something or they need something. Well, our job is to help them, you know, identify what they want or need or their talent and then get that thing, get the it for them. And then their responsibility is to use it. Brooklyn Park youth leaders will return from the National Conference on Friday evening. In the next month, young adults and Brooklyn Park City leaders will work together to create a draft of a comprehensive public safety plan, which will address different approaches to employment and also skills building. A former Maple Grove police chief now awaits U.S. Senate confirmation to U.S. Marshal for the District of Minnesota. Mona Doman spent 27 years with the Maple Grove Police Department, including serving as chief for 10 of those years. She became Minnesota's Public Safety Commissioner in 2011. President Donald Trump nominated Doman for the U.S. Marshal position. If confirmed, her new role would oversee security for federal courts and lead efforts to arrest wanted fugitives. One young girl got to take on a tough job today. You can repeat after me. Okay. I, Sarai Roberts. I, Sarai Roberts. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. That was Sarai Roberts getting sworn in to be chief of the Brooklyn Park Police Department for a day. Sarai won the opportunity after receiving a golden ticket from the department's candy bar initiative. Brooklyn Park Police garnered national attention when they gave away nearly 7,000 candy bars to kids in the community. Sarai was given a tour of City Hall and the police department, and officers say reaching out to young people is vital to fostering positive relationships. I hope the community sees that we're trying to connect with the community. Um, we're trying to engage outside of enforcement, and I think this is just a great way of doing that. <laughs> there are still are four Sarai, other winners Sarai, who have yet to come Sarai, forward nice with you. their golden tickets. The Brooklyn Park Police Department encourages those winners to come forward so that they can have a special interaction with the department as well. Well, it was due for a makeover. This is what the French Regional Park play area looked like last year. Now, after months of construction and planning, one of the most visited parks in the Three Rivers Park District system looks much different. Eric Nelson takes us there. It's beautiful. We love how big it is. And they have a lot of awesome features for the little guys. There is a lot of stuff to do here. There is like climbing walls and nets. It's really nice and there's lots of climbing stuff because I like climbing. It's like so cool because you get to discover new things. Things are hopping at French Regional Park these days. Opened at 10 a.m. last Friday and we have been crawling ever since. A brand spanking new $1.25 million playground is now complete. Today is by far our busiest day yet. Replacing the old one which opened in 1989. It's awesome. On a sunbake Wednesday in the Northwest Burbs, the play area was jammed as kids channeled their inner superhero. I think there's more kids and I kind of like it because there's nets. The playground has a huge footprint. 
and has all the bells and whistles. They are loving this slide, the rolly slide, and all the ropes and climbing, they love it. There is a 29-foot tower, six slides, 47 nets to climb on, a play area for the tiny tots, and even some spring this to cool off on a toasty day. We're excited about the water features that they added in. We think that'll be really nice for the summers coming up. The play area is also ADA friendly with a ramp that is accessible to everyone. And this is Mira and Mira has Down syndrome and this park has been perfect. She can go almost anywhere she wants to go. Credit for some of the design goes to kids from Park Brook Elementary School in Brooklyn Park. Their input was used extensively in the two years of planning. They picked the color scheme on the play area. They decided what swings we were having. They decided on the racing slide that's on the far end. So far, the playground is playing to rave reviews. She come here. It's a really nice park, and they've done really well with the place. I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. That was an expert right there. They've done very well for the place. Looks like fun. It was a big morning this morning for Plymouth-based Interfaith Outreach. If we can get this right, uh, these kids aren't going to be showing up at a place like ours 20 years from now. The Great Expectations Breakfast attracted a large crowd of people with the shared goal of making sure every kid in the community is ready for school. Interfaith Outreach partnered with the Wyzetta and Orono school districts to raise money for disadvantaged students and provide what they need to learn effectively. That includes things like backpacks and school supplies, mentors, tutors, and early childhood education. Interfaith Director LaDonna Hoy says the goal is to reduce the need for programs like hers. This community can get this right. Our workforce is going to get the employees they need. Uh, our economics, you know, it's like Paul Wellstone said, we all do better when we all do better, and we know that. Great Expectations hopes to raise just over a quarter million dollars by September. And if you'd like to help, you can check out the website that is on, our, on your screen right there. <laughs> Still ahead on CCX News, something you may not know about the mayor of Plymouth, and that is next in Off the Clock. Plus, a good returning group has Armstrong's football players excited for this season. But first, nice weather for a corn feed. The first day of the fair Thursday will be nice too. It's fair to say the mayor of Plymouth wears many hats. And Mayor Kelly Slavic sits on several different boards, including Beyond the Yellow Ribbon and the Plymouth Civic League. Reporter Sonia Goins shows us what she likes to do when she's off the clock. Kelly Slavic's passion for Plymouth started over 20 years ago when she and her husband decided to put down roots here. The former paralegal put away her briefcase for a job she wouldn't trade for the world. I wanted to be home with the kids. and Her two children are young adults now, but she's still very active in their lives. I have a one that's going to be a freshman in college and one that is a junior in college. And Most of her free time in the last 20 years has been spent running around with her children. I've been a hockey mom, a dance mom, and I'm still a football mom. My son plays at St. Thomas. And when she's not doing that, she's running on the trails. Last year, she ran the acclaimed Boston Marathon. I found out I had qualified by almost 10 minutes. She says it was a great experience, something she'll treasure for the rest of her life. They're chanting, they're yelling at you, really encouraging you on. Traveling is also tops on her list. After recently announcing she's stepping down as mayor at the end of the year, Slavic is planning more getaways with her family. I really wanted to show my kids as much as I could. I didn't have that opportunity when I was growing up. And so I wanted to show them, you know, New York City and Chicago and California and Florida. And Welcome to Grand nice. Place. Thank you. She says she'll never grow tired of volunteering in the community. Today she visited an in-home memory care facility where a traveling zoo entertained clients. <laughs> Slavic says meeting the staff and clients was special. To see the kind of extra care that they get and just, I think, the, to see the patients interacting in this way. And it was really neat to see them in more of a home setting to have family there. Pretty cool, huh? Mayor Slavic says she'll miss the public appearances and interacting with people of Plymouth when she retires, but she will always continue to make a difference in the city she loves. I've met some great people and I've had super opportunity to work with some some great people, interesting people. For Off the Clock, Sonia Goins, CCX News. 
And here's something few people might not know about Kelly Slavic. She's also an excellent cook. Her favorite dish is a spinach and arugula flatbread with mushrooms and olive oil. Sounds, Sounds good to me. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Still ahead, why people are grinning ear to ear in New Hope. But first, Park Center's new head volleyball coach is no stranger to the program. Jay Wilcox has the details up next. The Armstrong football program has been steady the past few seasons. The Falcons are young but promising this fall. Here's today's training camp report. There's a quiet confidence for the Armstrong guys. A strong junior class joins the senior group to provide optimism for this season. Uh, I feel actually great. You know, we got a lot of good energy going. You know, the team's looking nice. Honestly, I really love our defense. We're all like a family. You know, everybody's, you know, they, like I said, like Tyler said, the energy's great and everything, you know, seems to be working together. People are having fun. And yeah, that's what I'm liking about it so far. The Falcons are a young team, but have some varsity experience. Safety Gerald Shepard was an all district pick and is a leader of the defense, along with rangy linebacker Tyler Peterson. Ty Bowman is a game breaker at wide receiver and was all district last fall. Quarterback Jake Breitbach is ready to roll after taking over the starting job partway through his sophomore season. Massive Noah Pappas at left tackle anchors an O-line with some size and ability. One thing that's noticeable, the Falcons' new field turf, complete with logos and colored end zones. You know, it's first year, we get to play on it. You know, we got the red end zones, the big logo in the middle, it's so sweet. It gives us more of a, you know, sense of pride because we're fighting for that logo and to not lose on this field as well. Armstrong won five games last season, and while they make no bold predictions, think it could be a solid team this fall. Uh, the attitudes have been good, we're working hard, so I expect us to compete every week and play hard, and, and I think we'll, we'll be a good football team by the end. We'll find out soon if the Falcons will soar this season. The Falcons were five and four last year. Jack Negan enters his fifth season as head coach. 13 starters return in all. The Falcons open at Chanhassen next Thursday, the 30th. On Friday night, the Armstrong Cooper Youth Hockey Association is sponsoring New Hope's Movies in the Park. The Mighty Ducks 2 movie will be shown, and prior to that, Minnesota Whitecaps goalie Amanda Lavelle, who lives in New Hope, will be signing autographs. With youth hockey sign up only about a month away, it's a good time to think ice. It's an exciting time for us to partner with our community of New Hope. They uh, do a great job at the rink. And, um, August 24th, 6 o'clock, we'll have some autograph signing and some, uh, we're going to have a shooting tunnel with a radar gun and then the movie kicks off around 8, 8.30, um, so it's a great chance for the community to come out and watch uh, kind of an old school movie filmed here at uh, New Hope Ice Arena. Mighty Ducks 2 will show outside on a jumbo screen Friday night at New Hope Civic Center Park at around 8.30 with events beforehand sponsored by the Armstrong Cooper Youth Hockey Association. If weather conditions are questionable, call the City of New Hope's cancellation line after 4 p.m. Friday or visit their website for any changes. Many local volleyball teams will hit the court for their first matches soon. At Park Center, a new head coach will lead the Pirates. Andrea Emery is Park Center's new head volleyball coach, but she's far from new to the program. She played for the Pirates and was an assistant for 12 years before taking over for her father, Randy Almstead, in the offseason. Just a really exciting period, kind of an opportunity to have a little bit more of being in charge and a little bit more um, just managerial roles. Um, getting to have a say in who makes what team was a lot of fun. I had Andrea as a JV coach, so I know her coaching styles and I've experienced playing with her. But it's definitely different than Randy. I know I only had one year with him, but it is a little different. But they are also very similar, like being father and daughter. The Pirates have four returning varsity players from a team that didn't win a conference match in the tough Northwest Suburban, but did win 13 matches overall. It's a group with some raw talent that is improving daily. I think we have a pretty strong offense. Like We have a lot of good hitters and a lot of potential for everybody. And I think we could work on some service even more because you can always just get better at passing. We didn't really know going into this season what we would all like half our team, knowing that we lost a lot of starters last year. 
But I think like each time we get on the court, like we're just getting more and more comfortable with each other. And I think you can see that through our play for sure. The Pirates don't have as many year round players as some of the teams they'll face, which makes it tough. But what they can do is battle hard every night. I think we just want to be competitive in every match. Um, never give up until the very end and, you know, do the things that we can control, serve the ball. Um, and then when we get a chance to go on offense, take advantage of it. Park Center opens the season at Centennial next Tuesday. That's all for sports. Back to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Jay. Still ahead, one sweet and savory way to end our show. <laughs> We're live at the New Hope Lions Corn Feed when we come back. And finally, butter up, it's an all-you-can-eat corn party. That's right, the New Hope Lions Club is hosting it in downtown New Hope, and it's where we find Meredith Hackler. Hi there, Meredith. Yeah, hey guys, this is my first corn feed, and I must say, I wish that smell-o-vision was a thing, because you can smell the corn, you can smell the burgers, you can smell the hot dogs, and look at all the people that are already here. This just started at 4 o'clock, and I mean, that tent's pretty much full. Just about every table has people at it. You can see these Boy Scouts over here are working really hard to shuck all of the corn. It's over 3,000 ears of corn that they are working to get all of it nice and clean for you guys to eat. 200 pounds of butter but you know what the best part about this event is that it's for a good cause and here to talk with me about that cause is Lewis Oswald and you're with the New Hope Lions Club talk about what you guys do in the community hi yes uh, we raise funds here for the local community we do a variety of options uh, ideas of sponsoring PRISM uh, Americans with disabilities uh, we sponsor three Boy Scout troops who are out here helping us today um, we help go give money back to the city a variety of items that we do just in the local community. Awesome. All right. Well, it's only six bucks for all of the corn that you can eat. So come on out. They're going to be out here until eight o'clock tonight. Live in New Hope, Meredith Hackler, CCX News. All right. Thanks a lot, Meredith. Looks great. And consider it maybe like a little warm up. So go over to New Hope, have some corn, then head to the state fair. And You're a little bit of that 200 up. pounds of butter. Yeah. <laughs> just a little oh bit. Oh my goodness. A salt, right? <laughs> I love that she threw that in there. <laughs> Imagine Looks what good. they must have at the state fair. Oh, when geez. you think about that. Oh, geez. Yes, right. <laughs> that does it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you back here again tomorrow starting at 4 o'clock.